Hello, everybody. Welcome to, it's kind of a unique truck on Tuesday. Would you it say is, it is? You know, I, it is very unique. I'm very excited. It's a gear show. We're going to talk about gear, but we've actually got a special guest on this show. Gina. Let me go get her. Guest slash host did a, has done a review from us. Gina, come on. There she is. Yes. Hi, welcome yes. to the show, Gina. Gina has um, actually, we're not, we're, on, we're not only going to talk about gear today, but we're going to actually uh, review. Gina's going to provide us with a review because you've got some experience with a particular type of gear, right, Gina? Yes. You know, we used to do this kind of thing back on Facebook Lives a while ago. And then during the pandemic, um, we kind of relied on our gear guy because he was still out mm -hmm. in the field testing gear while we were stuck at home. And um, it just didn't work out. But we were lucky enough to get our hands on. I don't want to spoil this, but I'm going to go ahead and say mm -hmm. it's good gear. OK, you're going to yeah. I liked the results of, of uh, my time with this gear. So we are talking about Merino wool today. We're talking all about it. And we were uh, we got our hands on um, a woman's pullover, and they make it in a men's version too, um, from minus 33. And then also some over-the-calf wool socks. Um, I think my, my um, intuition is that the bread and butter of this company, minus 33, is these wool socks. Like that's, you know, where they stake their claim with these awesome really thin merino wool socks. We'll talk about those in a minute. Um, but it was kind of like they had offered us to try out a, a pullover and they were like, you know what? Try our socks too. They were confident and they should have been mm -hmm. because as you'll see, I really liked, I really like this gear. Well, it's interesting. So uh, Gina is a runner. Uh, and so she was the perfect person to test this out for us. Unlike me, who's more of a sitter and a typer than a runner. Although I could have, I could have done it. See how it felt when I was sitting and typing. Uh, but I yeah. think Gina is the great person to test this out. Uh, we've long said, we've long known that um, non-cotton clothing in general is better for outdoor gear. There's lots of different uh, synthetic type clothes that you can wear. Um, wool. I always think of wool. So I've got a nice wool sweater in my closet, Gina, that mm -hmm. I will bust out. Mm -hmm. Uh, on the, on the, uh, during winter, it's a nice, heavy, thick wool. It's not the com most comfortable shirt. It's a little bit scratchy, but if you put it over like a long, you know, a pair of long underwear or something like that, it's totally fine. It keeps me very, very warm. I've actually gotten rained on in my wool sweater before, and it was remarkably, uh, good at, you know, retaining heat, even though, even though yes. it was wet, right. Which is an advantage that you have over cotton. Uh, but Gina, it is currently at 75 degrees. Here yeah, it's in nice. North Texas where we live, and it's about 100% humidity. It's really humid. It is not terribly hot. It's slightly breezy. So honestly, I expected today to be one of the most miserable days. I find the hot, like the kind of temperate humid days yes. just terrible. But it, it turned out to be Absolutely. a decent day. Um, we'll get into that in a minute. I, I want to go okay. down this, this wormhole, if you will, and that'll make more sense to you as we go on, um, about wool. Okay, you're talking about your wool sweaters. And today we're talking about merino wool specifically. I'm curious if any folks in the comment have opinions, thoughts, want to help define what merino wool is. I know a few years ago, I think my first experience seeing the words merino wool, I was shopping at a store, like a, you know, like kind of a fashion store, and they were selling merino wool. And I just kind of thought every few years they like change the name of wool or they yeah. call some kind of cashmere cashmere. And I was like, okay, so this is like some weird synthetic blend of wool, whatever. Yes. And then like maybe a year later, my dad was like, this is made of merino wool and I wear it in the sun and I wear it in the cold and what, like, you know, it was like a fishing shirt or something. And I was like a fishing shirt, like, a, like that has got to be miserable. Um, You're right. So very confusing. He kind of kept touting it for a while. Uh, and now, in 2023 i see it everywhere i see it highly recommended um a lot of folks in the comments are singing the praises of wool kelly's just saying wool's the best fiber ever costco has some great wool base layer tops um that is a great tip 15 dollars wool pieces because wool is not synthetic you know if you're getting true 100 wool or you're getting merino wool you're getting something that is what do we call it organic natural Natural, yeah, natural. yeah, organic, yeah, right. It's not, it's not like fleece, which I think is is more man-made combination of different materials. Uh, we were saying earlier. I'm, I'm kind of with you, Gina. I didn't. I heard the phrase merino wool and just thought it was a specific kind of wool. You actually told me just not that long ago that there's an actual 
specific kind of sheep that it comes from. Merino sheep are the ones that make merino wool. I had no idea. I thought merino uh, wool, I thought the, all the sheep made the same kind of wool and merino wool was just made a little bit different. No, it's, it's a specific sheep. Um, and it's like the, I heard, I read this, um, like a, a couple weeks ago, they call it the caviar of wool. Okay. Uh, it's like the mm -hmm. fancy, fancy wool. So fancy. it's a, they yeah. So sure. to put it in perspective, um, you know, like your typical wool, what I consider the wool that I like, it's warm, but it makes me itchy. Um, yep. that wool can be 40 or 40 micron or more. I guess that that is like a measurement of coarseness or how thick like the fibers are, but merino okay. wool is much thinner. So it, it's 24 to 15 micron and below. Okay. So it's got a really thin diameter. And so, so the merino fewer microns, wool, the better. Right. Well, or as, the, or the, the finer, the finer. Okay. okay yeah. Gotcha, comfort gotcha, for gotcha. sure. Because the thinner it is, the less itchy it is. And most people say gotcha. Merino is not itchy at all. It's not rough. Um, but it's still really warm. Jason. Jason was way ahead of the game. I had no idea that it had been, or that it's been around for that long. That's impressive. Yeah, Jason, what do you use your Merino wool for? Just curious. Um, Michelle says she's got ankle high cut Merino wool blend socks that she'll wear in the summer when I have to be in hiking boots or gym shoes and on my feet a lot. Yeah, they make, there's some really great Merino uh, wool socks. So I'm going to say this at the beginning. This is what I'm really passionate about when it comes to wool. Okay, Aaron, yeah. this has been a mm -hmm. lifelong passion of mine. Mm -hmm. I'll say it now and I'm going to say it again at the end because I don't want anybody to forget. I honestly have kind of a no wool, no cashmere policy. Do you know why? No, why? Because I do not like bugs in my closet. And mm -hmm. the more organic your clothing is, you know, it's good for a lot of reasons. It's better for the environment. It may hold up for a really long time. You know, there's a lot of really good things about it. Sometimes it's better for being around your skin and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. But moths love to eat it. A certain kind of mm -hmm. moth, a certain couple kind of mm -hmm. moths really like to eat it. So I honestly kind of feel like I don't want wool in my closet. I'm not even messing with it. If I see like a moth that I know is just like an outdoor moth probably doesn't eat clothes anywhere near my closet, I really panic, okay? I am now making You, you just assume it's there to destroy your yes, clothing and ruin my life. Right. Right. right, right or right, it's either right. going to my pantry to eat my eat my food, which is another topic for another day. That's terrifying. Mm -hmm. Or it's going to go eat my mm -hmm. clothes. I, I just right. can't even explain how upset that is to me. <laughs> I love this piece of gear so much that we're going to talk about here in a minute. I'm making an exception and I have looked into how to control and make sure I protect this wool from moths Perfect. and make sure it doesn't, you know, draw any in. So there's a really easy solution. I'll reveal that at the end of the show. I'll save it for awesome. you guys. Uh, don't let me forget. Keep me honest. Um, but about, I'm trying to think about how many weeks ago this was. I want to say it was about three weeks ago. I received a very exciting package from minus 33 that included this quarter zip Wolverino pullover. Okay. Sun shirt is marketed as a sun shirt. Okay. So that's important to know. It's yeah. already throwing kind of what we think of as a, a wool pullover out the window because it does right. have some SPF uh, protection. Okay. And it's also right. So it's rated for warm weather and cool weather. It's a really awesome base layer and it's here we go. Yeah. The UPF rating of 20. Um, I think that's USPF. Same thing. 17.5 microns. We were talking about that a minute ago. So it's on the, the thinner end of the, like the diameter that we think of for the fibers of merino wool. It's right. pretty soft and it's recommended for hiking, camping, lifestyle, snow sports, running and biking. Okay. Also in that package, I mentioned that I got some mount, so they're called mountain heritage over the calf wool socks. It's a little cushion, something very unique about these fancy socks is they come in sizes and not just like two sizes. Like there's a small, medium, large, and extra large. I have kind of small feet, so I got the small sock. And I used mm -hmm. the socks first. Actually, I put both of them on, but I put the socks on first and I was shocked because they're fitted. They're like fitted socks. They're not super stretchy. They just fit mm -hmm. my foot. It's mm -hmm. like they were made for my foot. So that was unique. And then That's I put on the pullover. Cool. It was a very hot day. Did not need a pullover, but was taking my baby to um, baby gymnastics. And something mm -hmm. about baby gymnastics is there's a, a rule that the kids have to take their shoes off and socks off and the adults can wear their socks. So I'm pretty particular mm -hmm. about my socks on the days I go to baby gymnastics. So I got these like on the perfect day to try them out. 
How about that? Perfect. How the, how do the other gym parents feel about your uh, socks? Do you have any comments? Hey, everyone was like, where did you get those socks? Are those socks yes. tailor made for your feet? No, they they yes, much exactly. more into the, watching their own babies, of course. Yeah, Nobody was I looking at so. my socks. But honestly, right. do you want someone looking at your socks at baby gymnastics? I asked no, you this. No, not really. Yeah, not really. Not no, really, no, but I did wear them and they were great. My feet were not hot. They had like a little bit of traction. You know, they were a lot better. Sometimes I wear socks there that, well, I made the mistake the first time of wearing socks that kind of were like wearing down at the bottom, never doing that again. And I didn't yeah. have to worry about that with these. So mm -hmm. they held up well. Again, I mentioned it was hot. It gets hot in there because you're wrangling around little kids. Mm -hmm. I was not hot even in the quarter zip pullover. So I was pleasantly surprised yeah. and thought, I was just going to say, correct me if I'm yeah. wrong, baby gymnastics uh, at this age, the parents are pretty active in it too. So you're not just sitting and watching. Uh, you're no, doing a I did a backwards yourself. somersault. Yes, exactly. Okay, yeah, exactly. that day. <laughs> Holding a baby. Exactly. Yes. Uh-huh. Exactly. Yes. yes. No, that's exactly so you need, right. You need, yes, you need good socks for sure. Yes. Well, so that was my test drive just because I really was eager to put these things on and give them a shot. So I did. Mm -hmm. Went, mm -hmm. gave it two thumbs up, tried to think, okay, so how can we test this gear, do something that's a little bit fun for track on Tuesday? And then I think I, I pitched to you, okay, what if we pick a hot day and I mm -hmm. run in this Merino wool pullover, like we know it's going to be hot. We know it's going to be miserable, but we'll just see how mm -hmm. miserable is it to test. Is it yeah. true? Is it, is it a sun shirt? Can it, you know, is Merino wool really what it's cracked up to be in terms of wearing it in the heat? Cause I just didn't right. fully buy that that was possible. And you sometimes were happy to people say, say, yes, you can do I that. I was happy to let you do it with no problem yeah. at all. Well, sometimes manufacturers might say, ah, oh, yeah, sure. The shirt shirt is fine in warm weather. If you live in Minnesota, or, or somewhere like that. You know, we're down here in North Texas. Like you said, the temperature is not super high today, 75, but it's, it's humid. It's, it's warm. And yeah, you're right. Gina. I was more than happy to let you get the women's shirt and test it out for us mm -hmm. on your, your normal routine run. So uh, you did this today. Is that right? I did this today, but before I did this, I thought, well, I've got to put the socks to some use as well. So okay. I wore them to ride horses. And honestly, the, to me, all the idea today too. No. Oh, okay. That would have been really because no, I didn't. We saw each other in a meeting in the office this morning. I was going to be really no. impressed. No, you... <laughs> Aaron and I were in like a three-hour meeting. There was no time to do anything besides run and go to a yes. meeting. Anyway, yeah. that's a story for another day, guys. Um, <laughs> yes. No, no. On a different day, I put the socks on to ride horses, and mm -hmm. to me, again, I kind of thought like I'm putting this through my the least ideal situation because wool socks yeah. to me. What do you think of when you hear wool socks? Yeah, I think of winter camping, uh, or at least, you know, when it's really, really cool outside, maybe wear them to bed at night to keep your feet seats nice and warm. Uh, I think of them as being um, not the super softest material in the world, uh, durable, but also yeah. maybe so thick enough that like you have to untie your shoes a little bit. If your shoes have laces, you got to loosen them up a little bit Yeah, because they're thicker uh, and, and it's uncomfortable to wear, uh, you know, thicker socks when you're no normally wearing thin socks. But I think I've got maybe... Um, you know, that's an old fashioned uh, uh, view of wool. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think that's quite true 100% with this. I, well, I'm pretty much like you. I think hot and itchy, yeah. and they cause it kind of can cause blisters, I think. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I know the merits when you're going to be in water or something, like it's not retaining the water and holding it right up against your foot. Yes. I know that's good, but I don't really worry about that horseback riding. I want comfortable socks because boots are tight and you do get blisters. Yep. They performed wonderfully. They were very thin, much thinner than uh, most of the socks that I would tend to wear with boots, cowboy boots. So that's great. There you go. That is great. Yes. Very, Paige, very cool. Paige says she loves Merino wool all year long head to toe. So we're about to transition to talking fully about this pullover and how it performed on a run. But I just want to say one more time, uh, you check out minus 33 for their socks. There's a lot of different ones. They're pretty reasonable for Merino wool socks. Um, and then they're all rated for different activities, different heights. Again, they come in different sizes. Some of them are yeah, that's liners, kind of some unique, of them are isn't cushion. it? For socks yeah. to come in different sizes, right? Now, normally you- Sometimes it's, there's it's a small slash medium. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I feel like mm -hmm. you see a small slash medium and a medium slash large and like compression socks, some hiking socks. Like I even think at Scout Shop, you're, there's a few sizes. That's like your, okay. that's what I always thought was like the fanciest, most high end socks come in two sizes. Mm -hmm. Okay. These gotcha. come yeah. in small, medium, large, extra large. 
That's yeah. all those sizes. That is. That's great. Yeah, I could totally yeah. see the advantage of having a, a more um, customizable, you know, fit like that, a more, you know, perfect for the individual, right? Absolutely. Um, and again, these are rated for different activities as well. If you just need a liner, if you need some cushion, you know, m mine, I believe, had a light cushion. So, but it, did, it didn't, wasn't anything noticeable. I'll say that. So, so you're saying that like, say during, during the winter, during the real cold weather, you could use this as a, as a liner for a, a thicker wintry sock on the outside or something like that. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Or maybe it's just, you just need a sock. It's the thinnest sock. So it could be like a base layer under another sock, like you're saying, like, or mm -hmm. maybe like you have some wool socks and you, you want something softer. So you put the Merino wool right. sock underneath a thicker underneath. wool sock if you're somewhere really cold. Um, right. Or maybe you just need like a really, you, you prefer kind of a minimal sock. You could just use a mm -hmm. liner. Yeah. Gotcha. 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 And then what I, what I had was the, have as a light cushion. And it felt like a traditional sock. I think because okay. it was fitted, there's like some kind of like a, it feels like not compression, but like it, it's tight around your foot. It feels good. Mm -hmm. I like that. It's not just like mm -hmm. kind of elastic -y on there and like sliding around. It, yeah. it stays, but. Very nice. Okay. Very Aaron, nice. That's the socks. Again, okay. we're talking about Merino wool today. Um, I'm going to let the next video speak for themselves. So I basically, we, as I said, we were at a three hour meeting and in my head, I thought <clears throat> I'll run two miles. I'll run a mile, stop in the middle, take a video, let everybody know how it's going. I expect mm -hmm. to be miserable and then I'll do it again at the end. Knew I was going to be hot, fully expected right. to just, we didn't, you heard, you saw me. I was really dreading it. And I think I told mm -hmm. you, I was thinking I'm going to do two miles, but because this meeting was long, I think I'm gonna only do one mile and then I'll just stop halfway, half mile. So I'll let you guys see what happens. Let's do it. All right, everybody. I am about to embark on my run. I'm wearing minus 33's Wolverino quarter zip pullover. This is the women's version. It's super thin, it's black, okay? And reminder, I'm in North Texas. It's about 77 degrees out, so it's not super hot, but if I could get overheated in this thing, I'll be able to tell you. Um, I'm gonna run. I'm gonna stop halfway through my run, give you an update on how I'm feeling, how this wonderful sun shirt is performing. And then um, I will let you know at the end of the run if I still think it's a wonderful sun shirt. So far I'll say it's soft does not feel like you would think wool feels. And again, it's called a sun shirt. So it's got like, I wanna say it's around a, a 20 SPF. So it's providing some sun production, which I like to do when I go for a run. Um, but I'll let you know how I'm feeling in a little bit. Here I go. Any guesses, Aaron, how this is gonna go? Well, I, 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 my initial reaction is just to say, man, you're gonna be miserable. Uh, but, I'm, I've got an open mind. I understand that, uh, hey, merino wool allegedly is okay for warm weather. Right. Paige says cool she wears weather, it all so. year round. Yeah, I know. I've, I've heard that from multiple people. So I'm, I, let's hope, hey, let's hope it worked out okay. I'm eager to find out. Okay. So the next video is going to be me about halfway through the run. And remember, I was debating, am I going to stop? Am I going to, is this going to be a one mile or a two mile? Right. Let's okay. see. I am about halfway into my run, uh, 1.13 miles, so I'll double that by the end just to put this little thing to the full test, but something amazing is happening. Um, this is when I would usually start to be sweating. It's not the hottest day. Again, it's, it's a little below, a little cooler than 80 right now, um, but I can tell that I'm sweating, or I would be sweating. I can feel it where my sunglasses go, okay? And I can feel it a little bit like some coolness in the creases of my elbows and such. But something neat that's happening is this pullover is like wicking away what would be sweat. So I'm not really feeling it like I normally would. There's moments where I feel a little warmer maybe than I would in a t-shirt, but they pass. Uh, I'm amazed. I was honestly dreading this. So far, so good. Let's do another mile. Okay, so far so good. One point, did you say 1.2, I think? One something. So uh -huh. already you can see, I, I, you know, when you start out on a run and you think like, well, it'll, it'll be okay if I go half a mile. Right. And to make it a mile, you're feeling good. And you're I still think, feeling, yeah, you made, it, you made it a little over a mile and seem to be doing great. You look great. Well, you're I was fine. doing fine. Yeah. And so I thought, okay, I'll go another mile. I'll stop and I will 
give everybody a recap on how I'm feeling. And this yes. is what happened. Okay. Okay, guys, I am about two miles in. The fact that I can keep running and talking to you on video, not having to walk, I'm sure it's really annoying sounding to you, but it's amazing to me. I did not think I could go this long wearing a wool pullover, merino wool, of course. Um, <clears throat> excited to talk more about how this went, but I wanted to prove to you I'm not dying. I'm doing fine. I'm feeling good. I'm going further than I thought. Okay, see you in a few minutes. Looking good, man. I that's mean, impressive. Yes. The, let me put it in the perspective. If I'm, you, I asked thought you'd just be drenched. I thought well, you'd like, just, like, yeah, you just like, yeah, I want to pull over. Keep right. that in mind. And right. just, you don't have a basis, which is that if I was just wearing what I would normally wear to run, right? And you asked me to talk while running at two miles, I know right. technically you're supposed to be able to carry on a conversation or something. Yeah, but allegedly. While running, not me. Mm, I wouldn't I would have been never, ever. Like, I thought I would have to be fully stopped had taken a break, you know, stood the way you're not supposed to, where you're like yes. hunched over, yes. <sighs> taking a drink of water, sat back down on my front porch and then talked to you guys. That was yes. what I was prepared to do, but I felt yep. so good. I just went ahead and was like, I'll show them. I'm, I'm really running. The only thing I wish that I did is shown you my Apple watch. If mm -hmm. anybody needs proof, I'll, try to get a screenshot up here but it'll show that i did the run today i um, i believe you a, a scout is trustworthy yeah so i, I totally believe that. that you did yes yeah i just and i can't believe it so it almost seems like i mean it, so let's just say if you had been doing that run like you say in a, in a regular t-shirt or whatever you would normally be wearing like which would you prefer the 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 wool the merino wool you had or a regular t-shirt well i think i'm gonna let this final video answer for you okay all right let's see Okay, I'm calling it because honestly, I could keep going, but I need to go get ready for Trek on Tuesday. I'm shocked. I don't know if it was because it's a little bit cooler of a day here or because I'm wearing this pullover or both. I feel very good. I could definitely do a 5K right now. And for me, that's good. So I'm giving this thing two thumbs up. Again, this is the women's minus 33 Wolverino quarters at pullover. We're going to talk about the hiking socks by minus 33 as well. Um, anyway, back to future Gina. Hello from past Gina. <laughs> very, very impressive. So that's, that is pretty amazing um, that you felt as good I don't know, maybe even better than you would like on a normal day, right? Well, okay, I maybe I didn't say this in the video, but I was thinking it. There were moments where I feel like I felt like some warmth in a way that maybe I wouldn't have felt in like a, sometimes I'll run in like kind of a mesh material, like uh -huh. performance material. Yep, yep, yep. But they were just moments. Mm -hmm. Like it, it would go away and then I would feel normal and I didn't feel sweaty. I don't, I need to test this further. Is it yeah, because of the temperature need to today? Test it further, yep. Because the fact that I didn't feel sweaty, like I honestly got back to the house and felt like I could just go live after this. I took a shower because I just owe it to all of you guys. Yes, just to be right. safe. We don't want to. I thought, to, like, yeah. man, if I ran out of time, I, I really did cut the run off because I thought I have to have enough time to get ready for Trump on Tuesday. Well, you know, that's a, from what we're told, uh, that's the magic of wool. And in specific merino wool, is that it, like you say, it whisks, wicks away that moisture. Um, so it, uh, you know, the process of sweat evaporating is what keeps you cool. You want to, if you're hot, you want to sweat, you want to have that sweat evaporate. But the wicking can accomplish the same purpose that as that moisture leaves your skin, it cools you down. And if you're wearing, uh, you know, it kind of makes sense if you're wearing a shirt or, or a sweater or whatever it is that, aids in that wicking process it does you know it kind of makes sense that you would feel cool right because on a normal day maybe especially if it's humid that sweat is sitting on your skin and that's when you get really uncomfortable right when the sweat is just sitting there and it's not evaporating because it's so humid outside yeah. so if that thing if that merino wool shirt is is helping take that sweat off your skin i mean i guess like science says that it could that makes sense right it right does, you could feel cooler that way well it has to be true because all these people are touting it for warm weather as well um and honestly if i had been minus 33 and i had known my mind mindset i would have thought she's the wrong person to send it to i'm a wool doubter a yeah. little bit you know i like it in the winter i think 
great. Um, right. But I, I don't know if I'm likely to wear it in minus 33 degrees. Exactly. Because it keeps you warm. Let me. Uh, yeah. Not, yeah, exactly. So I'm, I'd be the same way. Let me blow your mind with this, though. They, I, I fact checked this just to make sure, you know, like I'm telling you my experience independent of what I'm about to read you. On okay. Minus 33's website, they recommend this pullover for spring, fall, winter, summer. The high activity, high activity temperature. So like if you are doing some like more active adventuring, they rate this for 45 degrees Fahrenheit to 75 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. So pretty warm. Yep. And then the low activity temperature is 60 degrees Fahrenheit and up. Um, my opinion is you could wear this quarter zip easily for something like a 5k, probably up to 80 degrees weather mm -hmm. like if you're looking for sun protection and it also comes in gray so if you're not i love the black i really really like it i didn't even talk about how i really like it i had just given away a fleece pullover very similar to this that was old and this is the perfect replacement for that looks cool it's got thumb holes so for me i say two thumbs up you're gonna run like a 5k distance in this up to 80 degrees hotter than that you know what you need to do. You live mm -hmm. in a hot climate, so follow what you need to do. Cooler temperatures. This is, you know, like this would be great for like warmer fall days by itself um, or cooler, you know, maybe a cooler spring day. It would be the, it is like if you could design what a base layer is, this is it. It is super thin. It's wicking moisture away from your body. It can go like you're not even going to have to buy your outer layers like a really large because they're going to fit on this. It, it, it's a very versatile piece, easily, easy to be able to be used all four seasons. Maybe Texas, you wouldn't wear it in the summer. I'll be able to tell you after this summer for sure, but it seems like a really versatile piece. That's that's really interesting. One of the you know, it, it's in the BSA field book. It's in the handbook. It's what we teach scouts and adults to protect yourself from the sun, uh, even not necessarily during during the hottest days of the year. You know, you can get sunburn when it's not that hot outside, right? If it's sunny day outside, of course, you can put on sunscreen. Um, but boy, you, I think you mentioned sun protection is one of the advantages of this right here, especially, you know, if you have if you have fair skin. You know, my dad cannot go out in the sun without long sleeves on. He has to wear long sleeves and yeah. long pants. His, his, you know, his dermatologist has told him you can't go out with short sleeves on. I mean, right. what a perfect solution for something like that, go out, be at least moderately active, right? During the summer months and be comfortable. Cause I, you know, I always, my mind always goes to, you know, Hey, if it's above 70, 75, I'm putting short sleeves on. Right. But that, yes. that's, you know, not necessarily the best thing to do uh, well, when you can get more protection. Right. Like this is, you should probably be depending on what level of sun protection you want to use and need, you might put some lock on underneath it. But again, this has an SPF rating of, of 20. And um, I think when we think of sun shirts, a lot of times we think of like that performance material that wicks sweat away. And it does. Okay. It does. But those things in my experience stink. They smell bad after a while. They, and uh, this is literally, a, they literally. really do smell. Yeah, they right. work great. Mm -hmm. They smell bad and yeah. they're really hard to ever get the smell out of. I, I found, I would love to know your tips for how to wash and get the smell out of those things. If you know, and I I but this doesn't. It's touted that. as something that does not. It's antimicrobial. It's not supposed to smell. Both the the socks that wear that really matters, and mm -hmm. you know your sun shirt. Yeah, and I also feel like the um, the shirts that you're describing are are they're okay, comfortable wise, but to me they're not ideal. Yeah. Uh, this sounds like much more comfortable, and and I think that the fact that it is uh, that it's not synthetic has something to do, it's breathable and that allows it to, when it dries out, you know, those those other shirts and your socks can stink because it, it, it holds that moisture in there and that attracts bacteria and that's what starts to smell bad. Well, this is made to stay dry, right? Wool, it's naturally, it, it, you air it, it out. It was functioning it that out. way on, on a sheep and so now it's doing that for you. Yes, <laughs> it's good enough for the sheep. It's good enough for the gander. <laughs> um, Aaron, I, I also, there's two things that, that we haven't even talked about that make merino wool really, really special. Not all merino wool, but this particular piece. Okay. Um, all merino wool, though, I believe this is true. 
I, you know, it's a little bit overcast. I thought it might rain. Yep. I would have been yep. fine. That mm -hmm. also blows my mind. It, it, it's good for a little bit of um, wetness. It insulates when wet. It'll absorb up to 30% of its weight in moisture without even feeling wet or clammy. Mm -hmm. So if you do get wet, it's going to insulate you better than cotton or a lot of synthetic materials. Pretty amazing. Yep. I mean, it's not waterproof, but right. a little, little drizzle, a little bit of sprinkling, or like maybe you you know, get a sleeve wet fishing or something, fine. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely not a raincoat, but like you say, if you're on a hike or something like that, and there's a little bit of a mist or a drizzle, you'd be totally fine with it. And my pullover had, has a hood, the men's and the women's has a hood. So you're set. Okay. Aaron, this is the thing that is the craziest to me. I really did not look forward to this piece and trying to keep it clean and thought, oh, I'm find somebody to give this to, mm -hmm. you know how easy it is to take care of it? I, I hope it's easy because there's nothing more annoying than a fancy piece of clothing that is it's so much work to take keep clean, right? Well, remember like I said so I was anti-wool, anti-cashmere? Part of it's because I know when you, you dry it, it dry. shrinks up to like a little toy dog size. I think my wool sweaters dry clean only. I think it specifically says, you know, don't don't try to wash it at home. It's like either only, hand only wash. Only let a pro handle it. Exactly. Yes, dry yeah. clean. Mm -hmm. This is easy care. You can wash it and dry it. I've already washed it and dry it. It looks fine. You can put it in the dryer? Yes. Okay. It doesn't shrink. Impressive. It doesn't would... lose its shape. It doesn't nice. fade. It's soft. It's amazing. And I can tell you, mine's in the washer right now. I'm throwing it in the dryer afterwards. It's fine. Yeah. That, that's to me, that's, I mean, that's, that's a game changer right there. Not all merino wool is like that. I do not believe this is. Okay. So well, make sure as, you keep an eye on it. But that as, gives, is that worth a lot of money to me? That is worth a lot of money. To, to me, me, it is. As the guy who has been responsible for doing many, many loads of laundry after a Cub Scout camp out, or a, a Scouse PSA camp out, or even a family camp out. All the laundry comes to this guy right here. So uh, if you're telling me you can put it in the washing machine and the dryer and be done with it, not have to not have to take any special, you know, make any special accommodations. And I'm in. if you're sending your scout to camp where they do laundry, you know, there's like laundry service. Yep. That laundry service is not laying it aside to dry in the sun. They're not hanging it on some line. It's all going in the washer and it's going in the dryer. Remember, you don't want to send any special care. Remember items. the laundry and, service at Jamboree, Gina? Uh, how you could turn in your laundry, right? Yeah, I'm not going to yeah. give them anything that's And that like was a luxury. Care. Yes, right. exactly. Yeah. I'm not giving them. And also, do you really want your scout to have something that they can't wash at summer camp? Right, right. No. Exactly. I don't exactly. think so. Mm -hmm. Um. Basically, Aaron, I give this two thumbs up. I, like I said, it's in the washer. I'm going to throw it in the dryer. And then now I'm going to reveal how I'm going to keep it moth proof. Again, okay, just yes. a reminder, all of these, you know, organic fancy materials do somehow come with a downside. There is one downside. They can attract moths. Okay. Mm -hmm. And those moths will eat your clothes and then they'll eat your other clothes. They might mm -hmm. even eat, they get desperate and they start eating your other clothes. Don't get me started on moths. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my merino sweater or pullover and I'm going to roll it up and I am going to put it in a Ziploc bag with the zipper, not the kind that I just trust myself to somehow seal it. I'm using the, the, with the heavy duty zipper. Thing. Yes, right, right. I'm going to squeeze all the air out of it so that it's even more compact than any of my other clothes and I'm going to put it in my camping box, but I'm going to use it for way more than camping, just so you know. That is, uh, I did not know you could do that. That you Just, could just... airtight. Uh-huh. Yeah. Now, there, the reason I, they suggest if you, uh, minus 33 suggests if you're not going to wear it frequently, store it in something airtight. I have also heard people who say airtight's not great because if there's any bit of moisture in there, you're going to get it's mold or something. There with it. Yeah. Uh -huh. yep. What I tend to do is just wash, like this is so easy. I'm going to wash it. Like I'm going to wash it seasonally. Like I wash most of my clothes and so I'll like seal it in there. Yeah, if you stay there it. all summer, yeah. if you take it out when it cools down again in the fall, you'll wash it before you wear well, it, maybe. I'm just, every time you wash it, I call it a reset. Put it in there, yep. seal it, whatever, and then just make sure I know. Keep it in the rotation or wash it occasionally. Mm -hmm. I think Perfect. that's simple. People yeah. do vacuum bags. People do mothballs. People do airtight containers. I want to keep it easy for myself. As, as few pieces of, as, of wool that I have, I'll just put it in the Ziploc. We're golden. That is excellent, excellent advice, Gina. I'm glad it worked out for you. Uh, thanks to those folks at Below 33 for sending it to Gina. Minus 33, uh, minus thank 33, you. Excuse me. Yes, and uh, boy, you found a good, they found a good home, I think. Uh, yes, I'm very excited to wear this. You're probably going to see it on 
a trek on Tuesday soon. Yeah, you'll be seeing it's just it in the washer right now. <laughs> right. You'll be seeing it live here over the next few months on Tuesdays, probably. Yes. So minus 33 has a lot of good gear. Um, you guys should check it out. It's I would say it's like mid price. It's not super expensive. It's not like super cheap, but it's super quality, I would say. That's always kind of my rule, Gina, you know, when buying gear. I don't want to buy the absolute cheapest one available, but I also don't think I need the most expensive one available, right? There's a sweet spot right. there right in the middle. Uh, it seems like this is probably right in that right in that area. Yes. And if you look at like look at a few pieces of clothing on there, there's stuff all over the radar. But I think that the the pullover I have retails for a little less than eighty dollars. So not bad. Remember it's a wool. It's wool. Yeah. Reese says he's say never that. had any moth problems, any of the merino wool socks. I don't know what you're doing wrong, but Reese I never had a moth problem, Erin. I just don't That's want one. It in, a, in a Ziploc bag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Reese, do you do anything? I hope I don't either. You know, only time will tell. I only, I've only had the one wool sweater, and I've always, it's been hanging in my closet. I've never, had any, I've never had any issues with moths or anything. Really? Maybe I just got lucky. Yeah, who, you know, who knows? Just got lucky. <sighs> you probably didn't. I just think I might have like an you know, maybe it's a rational fear, but it seems like it's rational. I think people really do have problems with these. Well, I think that if it makes you feel better, then you can do it. It's not hurting anything. Put them in, put them in a Ziploc bag. Yeah, I, I definitely am. Seal it Trust in a box me, I am. Yes. Everybody, if you have questions, comments, thoughts on Marina Wool, leave them. This video will be here after we are live today. Um, oh, Reese says he just puts them in his dresser. Me too, me too. That's what okay, I do. you brisky boys. Um, <laughs> guys, we'll be back on Friday for a wonderful Cub Chow Live. Um, Gina, thanks for taking one uh, for the team today. Although you actually got some exercise out of the deal, so who's the real winner here? Uh, good job on your video. That was great. Excellent product review. We appreciate it. Oh, it was thanks really, Thanks for being really a guest awesome. on Trek on Tuesday. Yeah, anyway, well, see you, Aaron. <laughs> That was Gina filling in for Gina on Trek on Tuesday. She did a great job. What I Gina, miss. you did a great <laughs> job. We enjoyed having you as a guest, our gear expert. Now our regular host, Gina, is back. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you on Friday at Cup Chat Live. Bye, everybody. <laughs>